My name is Arlene Saman, and I am a nurse practitioner with over 30 years experience in maternal and child health. I have been working in high-tech hospitals and now work in the most remote areas of the world where most people have no access to care. I am here today to share with you how simple it is to save lives. In 1997, I had the good fortune to meet His Holiness the Dalai Lama. He asked me to please go to Tibet and help the women and children. Many often died alone with no one at their side. At that time, I had no idea how to get into Tibet, and I asked His Holiness what to do. And he said to me, on the path of service, all doors will open, and I have found that to be very true. 1998, my journey began in Lhasa. I was astonished to see the birthing conditions in which women were giving birth, and the reality hit me for the first time how many women were dying in the developing world. Worldwide, every minute, one woman and eight babies will die. During my seven-minute TED speech, 56 babies and eight women will have passed away. I believe this is unacceptable. In Tibet, it was one of the few cultures in the world where they had no tradition of birth attendance, and women delivered alone out in the shed, and many of them died unattended. We started to train the local health workers to become midwives. We soon realized that that was not enough, and that many villages actually didn't have a midwife, and it would take us time to train them. So we started a program to train the community health workers, known as the Women's Federation, to go out and visit every single pregnant woman and make sure that she had the life-saving medications, a clean delivery kit, safe motherhood messages, and a delivery plan. They became to be known as our foot soldiers. Next, I gave birth to the network of safety. And I really love this photo because it's a raw Maori woman and they're very shy, but she happened to allow us to take this beautiful photograph of her. The network of safety ensures that all women have a safe, clean delivery we teach the family and the health workers, her community, and all the health providers and the local government to work together so that she does not fall through the cracks. The network of safety embodies the local spiritual and cultural beliefs. We do not try to force our Western beliefs on these cultures, but to understand how we can work together to make changes. Often in the places that I work, the blood of childbirth is considered polluting, and women are forced to, to deliver outside of the home in dirty, unsanitary conditions. We thought, how can we get them to change that behavior? And by understanding their ideas around pollution, we were able to get them to use a clean, safe delivery kit, which had a plastic drape, gloves, and a sterile razor blade, so that they could contain the pollution and then bury it, thereby not allowing the pollution to um, contaminate their home. And to this day, they are using the clean birth kit. After 10 years of working in Tibet, in the two counties where we worked, we had no maternal mortalities. And on average, every year, at least one out of 100 women would die. 
Newborn mortality dropped from 10 to 3 percent. We trained over 140 midwives and 1,500 women's federations who were our foot soldiers. On the morning of March 14th in 2008, I woke up to be nominated as a CNN hero and found myself embroiled in a political uprising in the afternoon. I will never forget that day as long as I live. And my staff in Tibet said, we must not give up. You must continue this work. It became difficult and unsafe for us to remain in Lhasa. So we turned the project over to our Tibetan staff who are to this day carrying on the legacy of safe motherhood messages. We learned in Tibet that with simple messages, a very simple clean birth kit, which cost only a few dollars, skilled birth attendants, and a clean delivery room that we could turn back the tide of birth-related deaths. One Heart is now working in the Copper Canyon of Mexico and in the foothills of the Himalayas. Last year, about four in the afternoon, I was sitting around with my staff and we heard that there was a young woman in the village who was going to be giving birth that night. And everybody was so excited and we could hardly go to sleep thinking about Sunita. About nine o'clock that night, there was a knock at the door and the midwife I was staying with got her bag and left. When I woke up the next day, I thought that I would find Sunita cradling her new baby in her arms. But instead, I found her exhausted and collapsed on the floor with her baby stuck in the birth canal. We called the community together and we had donated a stretcher so the men carried her for two hours down a very steep mountain to the local hospital where we had trained doctors and she was able to have an emergency vacuum extraction. Sunita and her baby are alive today because of the network of safety. My vision is that all women worldwide have access to a safe, clean delivery. It is not acceptable for me that any woman has to die giving childbirth. So I call you to action today to help me to save lives one birth at a time. <laughs>